Um, I think I stated this before that I am a university student uh, studying geography and English literature, and this is the last week of classes for this semester, which is hooray! Um, except for exams, of course, because the exams are coming out starting next week, but I don't have any next week guys. Um, the unfortunate thing of this being the last week of school is that I have all my papers due. Uh, I have two because I'm in two English classes this semester. Um, one of my papers is mostly done. Uh, I say mostly as in it's the required length, it just needs a little bit of tweaking. Um, and then my second paper, which is 10 pages, it's about a paragraph long and due in two days, which is a little bit unfortunate and a little bit stressful, and I'm trying really, really hard not to stress eat, even though all I want to do is eat a bag of chips and maybe cuddle up with the teddy bear and just cry and watch some Doctor Who or something. But, um, I will not. I will trudge through this paper because it's due really, 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 really soon. But, um, so yes, big ball of stress, big ball of shouldn't be doing this, but I am, because I want to procrastinate. But, uh, so I was in class today, and I have, I have some of the weirdest experiences in my English classes, I swear. Today we spent talking about how there's a very, very sexual undertone in Sir Gowan and the Green Knight and how everything is all about vaginal earth mounds and erect penises and castrations and all that kind of thing. But the thing is, there's actually none of that in the tale except the vaginal mound, which is the only one I saw. I mean, and it got me thinking about English literature majors and how a lot of them tend to read things that aren't really there. I mean, I can see where they got the got the argument from, but I think it's more that they're trying to focus on some sort of let's bring sex into this rather than let's see what's actually there and makes a little bit more sense. I mean, it's great that English majors as a whole tend to be sexually deprived, apparently. Um, and I'm sure there's like there's a lot of stuff that does have a lot of sexual everything in it, but I really don't think it's necessary to drag sex into everything. I mean, we're already in an overly sexualized society. Do we really need to bring a whole lot of sex into something that was written in the 1390s? Really? Do you really think they were horribly oversexed like we are? No. They didn't have Miley Cyrus. That's cool. They didn't have, you know, the sheer amount of porno that we do. I mean, look at the internet. Most of it's porno. Well, no, there's a really good chunk of it. You know, look how many... Look how much sex there is everywhere. And, you know, that's cool. I'm not complaining. You know, that's, that's great. I just don't think it's necessary to bring it into, you know, a nightly romance, a big Arthurian context. I just don't... There's more to it than that, and I don't think focusing on the sex necessarily brings out the message, message of what, you know, these guys are trying to say. I mean, this is like 700 years ago. I really, I don't know. They had the plague. They had all kinds of things that they needed to worry about more than vaginas and the earth. And whether or not, you know, I'm not even gonna go there. I'm... Either way, it's apparently I just need to write my two papers about sex, and I'm gonna get an A because sex. Let's really get rid of that two papers. So we'll see you next time.